For those of you who frequent my channel, you know that we talk about MetaSound sources a lot. But one of the things that we don't really talk about are MetaSound patches. And today, that changes. We're going to take a deep dive into MetaSound patches. We're going to talk about how to create custom patches and why you should definitely be using them in your workflow. So to kick things off and to make sure that everybody's on the same page, let's talk about what MetaSound patches are. And in the simplest of terms, MetaSound patches are essentially custom modular chunks of MetaSound nodes that you can connect together and then drag that whole chunk into a MetaSound source. There's no special power that a MetaSound patch has that you can't do inside of a MetaSound source. So you may be asking, why do we need to use patches if we can already do everything inside of a MetaSound source? And we will get to that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the interface. So as you can see on the screen, I've got a MetaSound source here on the left and a MetaSound patch here on the right. And if you were just a glance at the screen, you might think that I just had two of the same window open. However, if we start to really focus on a few things, there are a couple key items that stand out. And we'll just kind of work our way top to bottom. So if we look at the top here, uh, you'll notice that we do have MetaSound settings in both, but we do not have a MetaSound source setting inside of our patch. And that's because since patches are just modular chunks of code, we don't need to worry about the volume, the pitch, the class, the attenuation, and things like that inside of the patch because we're handling that inside of the MetaSound source. The next thing you'll notice up at the top is that we don't have any transport controls inside of our MetaSound patch. And again, that's because the MetaSound patch is just designed to be a chunk of code and you're not actually triggering or playing a sound inside the patch. You can have sound assets inside of a patch, but you're not triggering and playing them from there. Now inside of our members panel, uh, we do have inputs, outputs, and variables. Uh, by default, we have the on play, on our inputs and outputs uh, by default, unless we change it in our MetaSound settings, uh, we have a mono output. Now we do have these same categories inside of our patch, but you'll notice that I don't have a drop down here. So I can add custom inputs, outputs, and variables, um, but there are none in here by default. If we drop down here to our interfaces, uh, these interfaces inside the MetaSound source are ones that you're probably pretty familiar with. You know, your attenuation, your orientation, your one shots, spatialization, and things like that. Inside of the interface on our MetaSound patches, we have a lot more. We have all the ones that we typically have, but then we also have some input and output formats for our different multi-channel setups. So for example, if we're routing 5.1 audio through it, we now have audio inputs for those channels. And the same, uh, let's say we were doing a 5.1 in to a stereo out. Now we also have those outputs. The other big thing that you'll notice is inside of our MetaSound source, we also have our various analyzers. Um, now I'm doing this in version 5.4, uh, so that's why I have all the additional analyzers here, but if you are doing this in say 5.0, one, two, um, you will just have the regular analyzer. However, over inside of our patch, there is no analyzer. And again, it's very similar to why there are no transport controls inside of a patch. The patch is just meant to be a pass-through for data and signal. So now let's talk about how to create a MetaSound patch. 
If you're using an older version of Unreal Engine, you may have to come in here to your plugins and search for Meta Sounds and make sure that this plugin is enabled. Since I'm using 5.4 and this is no longer in an experimental or beta state and Epic has determined that Meta Sounds are production ready, uh, this is now on by default. So if you are using version 5.4, you won't have to enable this, but you will have to enable it in older versions. And since my MetaSound plugin is already enabled, if we come into our content browser and we right click and we go under audio, uh, you'll see that we have the MetaSound source up here at the top. But if we go down to the MetaSound sub menu, that's where you'll find MetaSound patch. Uh, you can also start typing in MetaSound up here and you'll find it here as well. And so we can go ahead and just create one of these. And I personally like to call my MetaSound patches MSP underscore, and then whatever it is that I'm doing. And so just to start this example off, and one of the things that I use MetaSounds for very, very consistently is footsteps. So we're going to call this MSP underscore random footsteps. And we can go ahead and open this up. Now, if you are super familiar with working inside MetaSounds, this is probably going to come pretty easy for you. So in the example of creating a MetaSound uh, for footsteps, I do need a wave player. And so I like to do footsteps in mono so that I can use attenuation. Uh, but if you're just using like a first person, like single player game, uh, you know, you can, you can do this in stereo. Uh, this isn't specifically for footsteps only, uh, but that is what I'm using as an example. Now, typically if we were adding a wave player inside of MetaSound source, we would have are on play, uh, which we can actually get if we use the interface source. And we can connect that there. Uh, for footsteps, I like to do a random get. So we can actually connect this to here. And maybe we also want to do a little bit of pitch modulation. So we can do a random float. And just for example, let's, let's call this minus two to two. Go ahead and connect these. And there we go. And so a lot of this is going to look very similar to your MetaSound sources. However, I'm going to move this back out of the way and I'm just going to create a meta sound, a meta sound source and call this MSS underscore footsteps and open this up. And now I mentioned previously that meta sound patches were something that you could drag into a meta sound source graph. So if I pull this in, well, I only have an on play. I'm going to go ahead and split these out side by side again. And you'll be able to see this actually change in real time. So inside of our MetaSound patch, in order to be able to add more to it, let's say we want to have access inside of our MetaSound source to this array. I can actually drag this out and I can call this a graph input. And over here on the left, you're, see, you're gonna see that I now have that in array as an option to send assets through. And I can also do the same thing with our random float. So, you know, let's say inside of our MetaSound source, I do also want to be able to access the min and max of the pitch random or the random float for the pitch, uh, I can drag this out and promote it to a graph input. 
And now over here inside of our MetaSound source, you'll see that I now have access to this min pin uh, for the, the float for our pitch. And it is important that you use the graph input uh, because if we were just to say promote this to a graph variable, that is only available inside the patch. It will not give us access to that inside of our source, as you can see here. And so let me go ahead and delete this back out. And we'll promote that to a graph input. And since we're, I'm specifically doing this for footsteps, you know, I don't need to worry about stopping because I'm gonna use the one shot. I don't need to worry about start times, loop, and any of this stuff. Now on the other side of our wave player, I do want our on finished. So I can go ahead and promote this to a graph variable, or I'm sorry, a graph output. And I can do the same thing for our mono out. And so you can already see that while typically this is what our random footstep meta sound would look like inside of a meta sound source, now that we're using a patch, this is much more condensed and easier to work with. Now I'm sure some of you are probably looking at this and going, yeah, okay, like I get that all of the inputs are there, but they're all kind of mixed up. And we do have customizable control over that. So if we click on a node, any one of our inputs, you're gonna see over here in the details that there is a sort order. And this is essentially what is controlling the order in which they appear on the MetaSound patch once it's brought into the MetaSound source. And the way that this works is the higher the number, the lower it appears on the patch node. So I do want on play to be at the top and I want that to be zero, which it is. However, I want my in array to be directly below that. So since my on play is zero, I can go ahead and set this to one. And you'll notice over here on the left inside the MetaSound source, my in array is now underneath my on play, which is exactly what I want. And I'm just gonna keep going down the line here. So I want my minimum to be below that. And I want my maximum to be below that. And so now you can see over on the left hand side inside the MetaSound source, these inputs are now in the order that I would like them to be and what works best for me. And the same is gonna work on the outputs. Now the outputs are technically how I would want them. Uh, but let's just say for example, that I want my audio out to be on top and my on finish be below it. Same rules apply. I just set that one number higher and now my on finished is below that. Now, just out of habit, I do like to go ahead and assign these sort order numbers just in case, uh, because I, I'll be honest, I don't know on the back end how meta sounds determine which order to put them in if they all have the same sort order. So just, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I go ahead and number those as well. Now I'll show you guys some more examples here in just a moment, but that is pretty much the basics of creating a meta sound patch. And I'll close this out for right now. Go ahead and make this a little bigger. And so now you can see all I have to do is I can create or connect my on finish, connect my source, connect my on play, and I can pull off here and turn this into a graph variable. And then this is where I would put all of my footstep assets. And then this just works. This is now a randomizer for footsteps that includes pitch modulation. And so now let's jump back to that question that you may have been asking earlier of if 
I can do all that inside of a MetaSound source. Why do I need to create the patches? And so let's go ahead and do this. Say you're working on a big project and you now have 10 different types of footsteps that you need to create. I, that's not 10, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and open all of these up. Actually, I'm just gonna switch these windows here real quick. And so here's the first one that I created. Well, now I have a bunch of these. So instead of sitting here and building out the randomizer and the wave player for each individual meta sound, I can just do this. Connect those. Move on to my next one. And just connect them. And I can keep doing this on down the line, but because there aren't any actual assets inside of this MetaSound patch, it's just a signal chain. This is all I'm doing. I'm routing signal in through this clump of nodes, which by the way, if you're inside a MetaSound source and you double click on a MetaSound patch, it will open that patch. But this is all I'm doing. It's, it's a chunk of code that I have already tied together. And this is gonna save you so much time. And so now all I need to do to make this per whatever footstep they are, is I just need to make new variables. That's it. And then throw my assets inside of that array. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have a 7.1 wave player and I want all of my outputs to go through a bit crusher. Now I could do this a couple different ways. I could sit here and drag out and put a bit crusher on here and then do the same thing for all of my channels or I can create a custom 7.1 bit crusher. This isn't something that's normally available inside your MetaSound nodes. Um, the bit crusher is, but having all of those in one is not something that is available. So you can just build it. And so as you can see, I've got a bunch of different bit crushers here and I can link the same or like say the sample rate, I can link that all to the same input and so that it changes them all across the board, just like you would do inside of a meta sound. And then I have them all running to the outputs. And I, if you wanted, you could also do this with the bit depth, but you know, just for the sake of the tutorial, I didn't bother. And so now this is just something I have. And if I change the sample rate, it changes it for everything. And to top it off, this is extremely scalable. So let's just say, you know, I needed something like a simple flip flop. Well, I can go ahead and create that. I've got a trigger sequence that loops and it toggles on and off. So instead of having a tr separate trigger for triggering, triggering on, and a separate one for triggering it off. Now it's all one in the same. So I trigger it, and when I trigger it again, this value will flip flop. And we could even get really crazy with it. And so let's say I wanted to build out an actual effects patch. Now, if you guys are used to working inside things like Ableton, um, you know that you can create patches that is a group of plugins that you can just drag in and route your signal through it and you're good to go. And so let's say, for example, I want to be able to route my audio through a stereo multi-band compressor. That's not a node that is available to me inside MetaSounds as a whole, but I can build one 
And so I'll go ahead and pull this in here. And this is my stereo multiband compressor. And you'll see that it is quite large. However, if I were to double click on this and open it up, you'll see that it's actually much, much bigger. So I'm using a stereo band splitter to split my bands out into, you know, the five different bands here. I've already created all of my inputs. I do also have the sort order for this set just the way I want it. This is gonna run up to our compressor. Now I don't have a stereo compressor, a quad compressor. The only node available to me inside Metasounds is the single mono compressor. But I need 10 of them because not only am I doing five bands, I'm also doing it in stereo. And so I have a compressor set up for every single channel on every single band. And I've also got these tied to their own um, input variables and I can link them. So I've got a bypass for band three and it bypasses both the left and the right. Um, just an example. And then from there, I have them all running into a stereo mixer so that I have gain control over every band. Then that's running into just a regular stereo mixer so that I have access to this gain, which I can use as my overall master gain. And then from there, it just runs to my uh, stereo left and right out. Now, truth be told, uh, I don't remember exactly, but this took me roughly 30, 45 minutes to build. And I know that I said that MetaSound patches save you a lot of time, and this is really where it shines. So yes, 30 to 45 minutes to build a patch is kind of a long time. However, in, a, in the grand scheme of large projects, if I had 30, 40 sounds that I wanted to put a stereo multiband compressor on, I don't wanna to have to sit there and spend 30 to 45 minutes every single time. Sure, I could copy and paste. However, it's just so much easier if all I have to do is just drag this in. This is even faster than copying and pasting. Because even if you're copy and pasting, you still gotta build it at least once. I know that I've said it time and time again, but I really can't stress how much of a time save this is going to be. If you're just playing around in the engine, you know, and you've got like a couple meta sounds, totally fine to build them inside the meta sound source. However, if you're working on large scale projects or even medium sized projects, and you're using the same things over and over again, whether it's an effects chain that you've built or just the core functionality like we did with the random footsteps, this is so, so valuable. So that is gonna wrap things up for this tutorial. I, I really hope that you guys can now see the value of Mattisound patches and how much time they're gonna save you. If you'd like what you saw and you'd like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. Until next time.